真 pray. Oh, just pray. A very good morning to us and praise the Lord. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning that the Lord has made that we may be glad and rejoice in it. And we thank God that he's been so good to us. The Lord has been so faithful. Faithful is his nature and he has been faithful to us and he has been good to us. Welcome to our online morning glory this morning. We thank God that he's taken good care of each one of us. And even allowing us to be here this morning, it has taken his hand. Allow me to commit our time our time before the Lord to him that he will come and take preeminence. Everlasting Father in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and we give you honor that you've been so good to us. Thank you heavenly Father that you've loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son that we may be called you are own, oh God. We thank you and we bless you. We thank you this morning for the bread of life. Thank you for the gift of good health and above all the gift of salvation. Lord, we magnify you and we exalt your name. You've been good to us, dear Lord, and for that we praise you and we honor you, dear Lord. Thank you for the care that you've taken upon each one of us. Thank you that we are in good health. Thank you, Lord, that we have the gift of salvation. Lord, we are grateful that you snatched us just at the right time. We honor you and we appreciate your name, dear Lord. And we thank you even for the gift of a sound mind, dear Lord, that we can be able to make decisions. We can be able to even engage and uh, make decisions, do the right thing. So God, we are grateful this morning and we bless you. Receive our worship and receive all the honor, dear Lord. Father, I thank you this morning because of my viewers and my listeners. And now I pray, Father, that as we unite our faith this morning, that you shall be in the midst of us, that you shall hear us. You will hear us as we petition you, dear Lord. We thank you and we magnify your name. Bless each one of us, dear Lord. And as we come here, dear Lord, we come with the confidence of knowing that you hear our prayers. And because you hear our prayers, all mankind will come to you, O oh God. That is the confidence that we have. We thank you and we praise your name. We pray that you take preeminence. We pray, dear Lord, that this morning you would take over. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us with groanings that words cannot express. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen and amen. We thank the Lord for this opportunity that he's given us and I'm glad that you're joining us this uh, this morning. Karibu sana, you that is joining us for the first time, you that has become our regular attendee of our virtual uh, morning glory. The Lord bless you so much and you're such a blessing. Allow me to begin our morning glory this morning with words from the book of Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one, and I'm going to read a few verses. Genesis one, verses three to four, the Bible says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, pleasing, useful, and he affirmed and sustained it. And God separated the light, distinguishing it, from darkness. Now allow me to jump to verses 14 where the Bible says that then God said let there be light bear us that is the sun the moon and the stars in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be useful for signs or tokens of God's provident care and for marking seasons, days, and years. And let them be useful as lights in the expanse of the heavens to provide light on the earth. And it was so, just as he commanded. Verse 16 says that God made the two great lights, the greater light, that is the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, that is the moon, to rule the night. He made the galaxies of stars also 
That is all the amazing wonders in the heavens. May God bless the reading of his word. Now when you open the Bible to read from the first book, Genesis, the Bible says that in the beginning God created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. Now in other words, the Bible says that God willed for there to be heavens and earth from something that did not exist. Now the Bible says that the earth was formless and void or a waste and emptiness and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And now the spirit of God was moving, hovering or even brooding over the face of the waters. And the first thing that God says this is the first time that God says. He says, let there be light. And there was light. Now I was quick to ask myself and even wonder, why is it that the first thing that God spoke into being was light? And I pray that the Lord through the, his Holy Spirit will speak to us this morning concerning why is light so very important? that it was the first thing that God spoke into being when he was creating on the first day. Now we are in the month, as a church family, we are in the month of divine acceleration. The month of November is the month of divine acceleration. And I desire that even as we pray this morning, that we will pray that we will walk in light for divine acceleration. There is a way that when light comes into our lives there is a way speed comes into our lives and many a times when we are talking about light in the bible we are talking about understanding we are talking about knowledge we are talking about understanding now the reason why god would speak light into being the very first day is because there are the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11 that that which was formed, no, it is actually Hebrews chapter number 3, that that which was formed was formed from that which was not there. Let me confirm that I need to be sure about that scripture. I'm thinking it is in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 and I need to be sure about that. The Bible says it is uh, Hebrews 11 3, the Bible says that by faith, that is with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God. We understand that the worlds or the universe, the ages, we are framed and created or formed, put in order and equipped for their inher intended purpose by the word of God. So that, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. That by faith we know that that which is seen today, the heavens and the earth that we know today, was formed from something that did not exist. And that is why God would first speak light into being. Light into being. He himself was the light. He spoke himself into being. He himself is the light of the world. He spoke himself into being. And as he spoke himself into being, the Bible says that God saw the light was good, pleasing, useful, and he affirmed and sustained it. And God separated the light, distinguishing it from the darkness. Now, if you read the book of uh, John chapter number one, the book of John chapter number 1 verses 5 the Bible says that the light shines on in the darkness and the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it that when the light shone darkness could not understand it darkness could not comprehend it now when the light shines in our lives and the light of understanding, the light of knowledge, the light of wisdom, when it shines upon our lives, 
when our lives are illuminated by understanding and wisdom and knowledge, then ignorance cannot comprehend it. Because many a times when we are talking about when we are talking about um, when we are talking about light, we are talking about understanding. We are talking about wisdom. But when we are talking about darkness, we are talking about ignorance. Now, as we talk about divine acceleration in the month of November, one of my prayer this month is that the Lord may help us to walk in light. In light, number one, to mean that our walk will be in light. That we will be a people that will be separated for God. We who are called by the name of the Lord, we who are called Christians, we will walk as the light of the world we are supposed to be. That is number one. Number two, we will walk in light, meaning that we will walk in understanding. That as the sons of Isaac, we will understand. We will walk as the wise, not as unwise. We will make use of every opportunity. That every opportunity that is given to us, we will make use of it. Every opportunity that we get, because many a times opportunities may not be given to us, but we will get the opportunities. That we are going to make sure that we will use these opportunities. And number three, we will walk in light. When we are walking in light, other than seeing where we are going, we will also become visible. And that is my prayer for all of us in this in this season that in this month of divine acceleration the lord will help us to walk in understanding the lord will help us to walk in holiness the lord will help us to walk in a way that we will become visible that your company will become visible you as a person will become visible whatever the lord has put in us because the bible says that whatever we need for godliness and for this life has been deposited in us. And this has been done by the experiential knowledge of knowing him. It is through this experience of knowing God and God himself is light. Now verses number 14 says that, that then God said, this is on day number four. Then God said, let there be light bear us. That is the sun, the moon, and the stars in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be useful for signs or tokens of God's providence and for marking seasons, days, and years. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible version so that you don't wonder why your version is different from mine. And let them be useful as lights in the expanse of the heavens to provide light on the earth. And it was so just as he commanded. God made the two great lights, the greater light, that is the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, that is the moon, to rule the night. Now there's something that caught my attention when I was reading this, that he made two greater lights. There was the sun and there was the moon. Now the greater light, he said, you're going to rule the day. And the lesser light, you're going to rule the moon. Now God is the one who created both of them. But he created different intensities of light. The greater light to rule the day. The, great, the lesser light to rule the night. And that is how it is in this kingdom. That in this kingdom of God and in the kingdom that we are in. Because the world is spiritual. The world that we are in is very spiritual. The greater light, whoever has greater understanding, no matter where that understanding is coming from, whether it be godly or otherwise, the one with a greater understanding, they take the day. The one with a lesser understanding, they take the night. Now, I don't know how many of us care to know whether there is a moon at night. So few of us care to know whether there is a moon at night so that I can go to sleep. But when a day does not have the sun, we are concerned. We are deeply concerned. As a matter of fact, I think July is that one month that we, we look forward to, to it coming and passing very fast. Why? Because there is no sun. And we celebrate the sun. Whenever the sun is out, we celebrate. Why? Because it is the greater light. 
and so shall it be even in our lives that those with a greater understanding will take the day and those with a lesser understanding will take what will be remaining. Now my prayer for you and I is that the Lord will lift us up to be a people of greater understanding. Now remember the story of Daniel and even the story of Joseph. The reason why these men rose to the positions they did, it's because they were men of greater understanding, men of greater intelligence. Now the Lord has put in all of us a gifting. Our giftings will make rooms for us but it will take a greater understanding for us to reach. The Bible says that weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. There's an understanding that is needed to end our morning for us to take the day with joy. And my prayer for you and I is that the Lord will open our eyes. The Lord will enlighten us with understanding. Now, if you read the epistles written by Apostle Paul, if there was a man that really hated ignorance is the apostle paul because the apostle paul would write and say i do not want you to be ignorant of the schemes of the enemy now writing to the ephesians he would tell them i pray that the eyes of your understanding be opened why because he knew and remember this is a man that was educated number one number two this is a man that was a pharisee from birth if it is a matter of the law he knew law Number three, this, is what, this was a man that was so zealous of the law that he persecuted the church. And he knew that if we live in ignorance in this kingdom, then the other kingdom will take over. And that is why I believe that the Apostle Paul was so, you know, he was so zealous about, I do not want you to be ignorant. Do not be ignorant, not even for once, do not. And I want us to go before the Lord and make a prayer. Even as we ask the Lord, Father, I want to walk in light. I want to walk in understanding. I want to have eyes that can see and ears that hear what the Spirit is saying. Not ears that only hear, but they will hear what the Spirit is saying. As we hear, we will be able to walk in understanding. Colossians chapter number 1 verses 13 to 14, and I'm reading the NLT, the Bible says, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Now I want us to go before the Lord and make that prayer in thanksgiving. Knowing that this God rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. He didn't just do it by a way of saying, you just move to the kingdom of, of the son that I love so much. No, our freedom was purchased and our sins were forgiven so that we would move out of ignorance into light. That was the desire of God, that we would know the truth and the truth would make us free. Truth alone cannot make us free. It is the knowledge of that truth. It is the knowledge of that light. And the truth is a person. The truth is Jesus Christ. Light is a person. Light is Jesus himself. That we will know him. That we will always remember that we were rescued from the kingdom of darkness that ignorance is no longer our portion. Ignorance is no longer, you know, it's no longer bliss to be ignorant in this kingdom. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that in the days of ignorance, God overlooked. But now we are, not, we are no longer in the days of ignorance. So God is not going to overlook. In this day, he commands that all men repent. So we are no longer in the days of ignorance. There is no longer any bliss in being ignorant. So my prayer is that the Lord will, he will enlighten the eyes of our understanding that we may be able to see the light. 
everlasting father in the name of jesus christ we thank you this morning thank you that you have purchased our freedom and you've forgiven our sins and i thank you dear lord because this you have done for your name's sake as the east is far from west dear lord that is how you've forgotten how far our sins are from us lord we thank you and we bless your name thank you jehovah god because while we were still uh, we were still powerless while we were still sinful you sent your son jesus christ to come and die for our sins and lord we thank you that you have transferred us from ignorance into understanding you have transferred us from ignorance into knowledge father i pray this morning that you may help us to walk in that wisdom and understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we have the advantage of the Holy Spirit, that we are no longer walking as orphans in this world, O oh God. We are no longer walking on our own. You've given us the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, who is our comforter, who is our advocate. Lord, we thank you and we bless you that he does not only comfort but he consoles and also he compensates everything that we've lost father we thank you and we bless you thank you because we have an advantage as we walk in light we have an advantage to make use of every opportunity to make use of every opportunity to walk as the wise and not as the and the wise, as unwise oh god father we thank you and we magnify your name receive all the praises and all the adoration thank you dear lord because your light has appeared to us your grace has appeared to us and because your grace is a teacher it teaches us to say no to all ungodliness thank you because when your light has shone upon our lives no darkness can stand it no darkness can comprehend it oh god we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you for illuminating our lives. Thank you for illuminating our affairs, Lord, that no darkness can stand still in our lives, O oh God. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Receive all the adoration this morning. Receive all the honor, faithful God. Teach us to always remember that we are now no longer in the kingdom of darkness. Teach us to remember, always remind us by your Holy Spirit that there is therefore now no, no, no condemnation to those of us that are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to your spirit. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you and we magnify your name. Receive our adoration this morning. Proverbs chapter number 4 verses 18. Proverbs chapter number 4 verses 18. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. And the Bible says, But the lovers of God walk on the highway of light, and their way shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. But the lovers of God walk on the highway of light, and their way shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Now this is the verse that says that the path of the just is like the shining sun. Now that shining sun is equated to a highway of light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And I want us to go before the Lord and pray for us and our children. I want us to pray for our families. I want us to pray for ourselves. That the Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. We are going to make a prayer. We know what is happening. We know the corruption that is, that is in, the, in the world. We know the corruption that is there. We know the evil. But we are going before the Lord to tell him, Father, we are lovers of you. Help us to walk in the highway of light. We will be transformed. We will not conform to the culture of this world. We and our children are for signs and for wonders. We will walk in light. That even when our children are wherever we cannot see them, 
they will walk in the light of God. That even when we are operating our phones, our laptops, our gadgets, when we are operating them, we will always remember that it is not about uh, it's not about the one who is looking what I'm doing. It is not about my spouse. It is not about my parents. But it is so much about the fear of the Lord that we will be the just people whose paths shine brighter and brighter. So go before the Lord and pray. Father, this is my prayer this morning. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. Lord, we thank you because you are a promise maker and a promise keeper. We thank you, Father, because you've said those that are lovers of you, those that are just, their paths are going to be brighter and brighter. We are going to walk on the highways of light. And this is my prayer today concerning us and our children and our families and our spouses, Lord, and those that, are, that bear our name, so God. I pray this morning, dear Lord, that you may help us to be a remnant in this generation, that we will stand as the shining lights, dear Lord, in this perverse and corrupted generation. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, give us the courage to stand out in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray may you help us to walk in light. I pray that you may transform us by the renewing of our minds we will not conform to the standards of this world we declare that we and our children are for signs and for wonders that our steps will be ordered of you dear lord and father this morning we pray for our children lord you promised in your word that you're going to be the teacher to our children all the days of their lives and peace will be their portion. How I pray, my Father, that even when our children are away from us, may you be their teacher. As they use those gadgets, Lord, I pray, may you watch over them, put a fear of you in their hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as they relate, dear Lord, I pray that their friend's gate is going to be guarded by you that they are going to keep company that is godly they are going to keep company that will influence them to godliness father we pray in the name of jesus would you build a hedge of protection around our loved ones build a hedge of protection around our loved ones lord father i pray may we walk in light may we walk in the fear of you we pray, mighty Father, that you may hide us under your wings, Lord. That even when this flood, when this flood of the enemy is coming, Lord, I pray, may you keep us safe. May you hide us from the same in the name of Jesus. And Lord, this morning, we stand on your word to declare that when the enemy rises like a flood, you're going to lift up a standard against him by your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray. Would you remember us and our children? Would you remember us and our loved ones, Lord? I pray in the name of Jesus concerning our marriages, Lord, for those of us that are called by your name. Father, may we be a remnant in the name of Jesus. Use us to change the narrative around marriages, O God, that marriages are still working in this day and age, dear Lord. May you use us as a remnant in the name of Jesus. And Father, this morning I pray concerning marriages that could be going through a storm. How I pray that you who instituted marriages, Lord, you're going to come through for these marriages. Let there be light in every darkness and may every darkness disappear in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, take over, we pray. We pray that you may grant us the wisdom to be able to resolve the issues that we could be having. Lord, we thank you and we magnify your name. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. Lord, let there be peace in our families. Let there be peace in our families, Lord. I pray for a people, dear Lord, a couple who could be going through financial crisis. They are in debt, left, right, and center, Lord. Father, I pray, just as you have promised that the path of the just will shine like the sun. 
We will walk in the highway of light, dear Lord. Our paths will shine brighter and brighter every day. Let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you may give us understanding. You may give us strategies to stand out in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you, Heavenly Father. Matthew chapter number 5, verses 16. And the Bible says, allow me to read from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, so don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others. So that your commendable works will shine as light upon them. And then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. That don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others. So that your commendable works will shine as light upon them. And then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. Now in essence, this is to mean that in every one of us there is light. Because the Lord gave us a mandate. Jesus Christ left us with a mandate to be the light of the world. To shine in the world. To be a difference. And the Bible says, let it shine brightly before others. So that your commendable works. Now the difference between us and the world will be concerning our works. The commendable works. They will only know that we are the light of the world when they see our commendable works shining as light upon them. And then they will give praise to our Father in heaven. I want to connect that with Matthew chapter number 10 verses 16. And I want to read from the message Bible that says, Stay alert. This is Harzada's work I'm assigning you. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourselves. Be as shrewd as a snake, inoffensive as a dove. Now this is the scripture that says that I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So because of that, the Bible says you need to stay alert because that is a hazardous work that I'm calling you to do. I'm assigning you a hazardous work. Now when light has been sent into the darkness, there's a likelihood that either the light will be dimmed or the darkness will disappear because of the intensity of this light. Now, because we've been assigned such a hazardous work, now you can imagine a sheep walking among us, the wolves, in the company or among wolves. Now, the likelihood is that the wolves will prey into the sheep. And that is why the Bible would say that don't call attention to yourself. Now, because of this, that is why we should let our light shine because of our commendable works. And when our commendable works is seen, it is not we to receive the glory. The glory goes back to our Father in heaven. And I want us to go before the Lord and pray, Father, let my light so shine before men that when they see my commendable works, my light will shine upon them. And when that happens, I will not call attention to myself but all glory and honor shall come back to you. Our heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. And we pray, dear Lord, because you've given us such an assignment, that Lord, you would help us to be the light that you've called us to be, that we will light the world, so that when men see the commendable works we do, that work, Will be, uh, will be light that shines upon them. And they will give glory to you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for reminding us that you've sent us as sheep among wolves, that we cannot afford to 
start uh, to we cannot afford to be swallowed we cannot afford to compromise you've called us to stand out and not call attention to ourselves father i pray in the name of jesus christ that you may help us that in our various places we are going to stand out and i pray more so for the body of christ that because you've called us out there among wolves dear lord may you grant us strategies to be able to win them over in the name of jesus grant us the strategy help us to be the salt that flavors and seasons the world for i pray that none of us will conform to the standards of this world that lord as we endeavor to win over the world we will be different from them and they will be won over how i pray dear lord that it is not so much about the words we use to woo them but when they see us live the life they will be won over to you lord father i pray this morning give us the courage to stand out give us the courage to live the life you've called us to O oh god the bible says that no one lights up a lamp and puts it under a bucket and you say that when light is lit it will be like a city built on a hill and now i pray that as we walk as the light of the world that we will be like a city built on a hill it cannot be ignored how i pray that as we do whatever we are doing in the marketplace we will not be ignored in our homes dear lord help us to uh, to reflect the christ that we preach as we talk to our children as we bring them up as we talk to our spouses as we talk to our workmates as we talk out there in the market lord as we relate in church dear lord i pray faithful father that you will be heard in our speech you will be seen in the way we operate oh god i pray that our speech will be seasoned with salt that every time we are relating lord our mouths and our tongues will be instructed of you that as we talk to the weary dear lord they will find a word for the season to heal their hearts lord we thank you and we bless your name help us dear lord to remember that we are living in very hazardous days we are living in perilous times dear lord and there ought to be distinction between us and the world how i pray mighty father help us to stand out as the christians you've called us to be lord we thank you and we bless your name receive our adoration this morning proverbs chapter 24 as we are almost coming to the tail end proverbs chapter number 24 verses 3 to 5 and i'm reading from the nlt the bible says A house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. The wise are mightier than the strong and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. A house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense through knowledge its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables the wise are mightier than the strong the wise are mightier than the strong and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger and i want us to go before the lord and make a prayer concerning our nation And even as we make our a prayer concerning our nation we are praying for all the leaders. And I know that you and I are leaders in various wherever we are. So we are praying for all the leaders including yourself, including our pastors in the fivefold ministry, wherever any leader that you know. We are going to pray for wisdom. We are going to pray for knowledge and we are going to pray for understanding. that the lord may help us to build the various platforms we do in those three everlasting father in the name of jesus we thank you this morning and we pray 
that you may endow all our leaders with wisdom. Father, we thank you because you've commanded us to make prayers and supplications for our leaders. And this morning we pray for every leader in all the fields, dear Lord. The Father, you're going to equip us with the knowledge, with the wisdom, with the understanding that we need to be able to even represent you. We pray for all our leaders that as we govern the various places and platforms you've given us, that Lord, wisdom will be in us in the name of Jesus. We pray that you may raise Josephs, you may raise Daniels, Esthers, Debras, dear Lord. The faithful Father, the intelligence, the wisdom, the knowledge that was in them, O oh God, will be upon us in the name of Jesus. We pray that you may help us to even make the right decisions, that we'll be a people that are dignified, people that walk in integrity, people that walk in godly character. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you gave us to be in your presence. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you because your presence, in your presence, mountains melt like wax. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And I pray this morning that, Lord, you may bring light, Lord, cause us to walk in understanding, grant us strategies, Lord. Father, as we move out of our houses, we pray. May you grant us understanding. As we move out of our houses, we declare we are blessed of you. Teach us to speak correctly when we speak, Lord. We thank you and we bless your name. Grant us favor with you and favor with men. And I thank you this morning for every giver that has been a blessing to us, Lord. We pray that you're going to bless them indeed, Lord. Meet them at their, uh, meet them at their points of needs in accordance to your riches in glory. And may you multiply us. May you cause us to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen and amen. The Lord bless you so much for keeping me company. And I believe that we've been able to pray concerning understanding. That the Lord will grant us understanding wherever we are at our homes. That we are going to be a people of understanding. It's our time to give. I want to give us an opportunity to be a blessing this morning. Thank you so much for you that have been giving. The Lord bless you so much. And we have two ways of giving. We have our pay bill number. We have a Lipa 9 Pesa. Our pay bill number is 842050. And we can do a direct bank transfer. The details are provided on the screen. So anytime you do that, you'll get a confirmation message that you sent your, your offering. You sent your wherever manner of offering. You sent it to Praise Chapel. And the Lord bless you so much. I want to invite you to our service this evening. We have a, an on-site service happening this evening at Praise Chapel Kizengo. You're most welcome. It begins at 5.30 p.m. And we welcome you so much. In case you're not able to, to come on-site, you can tune in here online at Praise Chapel Kenya, here on, on YouTube and on Facebook. And you're most, most welcome. In case you've not subscribed, kindly do that immediately we are done with this and on sunday we have two services one that begins at 7 30 and the other one at 9 30. you're most welcome to join us we are located at uh, general madenge road opposite aga khan hospital next to mamangina girls thank you and the lord bless you may the lord minister his light to you and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom.